Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning, and I want to welcome you on this rainy uh, Sunday morning, first Sunday in August. And I want to continue to just be in prayer for you all as we go through such a challenging time. As we know, we, some of us are wearing masks, some aren't. But I just wanted to be on the safe side, and I want to make sure that I'm taking as much care for you uh, because I do go to some places where um, I can visit people in the hospital or certain things. So I just don't want to give anybody anything. So I'm being cautious so that I may not cause any challenges or health concerns for anyone else. And I just think because of where we are right now, we may want to consider wearing our mask again, even though some of us are vaccinated, simply because they're still not sure how this uh, new variant is dealing with all of us. and so probably better to sit, err on the side of conservative and cautious. And so consider that in the coming days and weeks as we continue to travel through this time. As we've been journeying with Joshua, now we're journeying through this time with ourselves and, and what's going on around us. So let us be cautious and, and mindful of that. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, laughter, laughter is the best medicine. John didn't have to see teacher after class, but the other one did. <laughs> uh, now I'll uh, hand you over to Kathy. Good morning, Elder State family. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, happy August the 1st. Uh, summer is, we still have a month of summer. I'm going to look at it through the pilot test event. And, uh, you know, uh, it seems like things are going by really quickly. On the other hand, sometimes it seems like Groundhog Day. Now that this variant is here, it's like, oh no, not you know, not again. So I actually wore a mask this morning for two reasons. One, to be, you know, as Pastor Kerr said, to be safe because I was reading that most of Anthony Rose is in the highest, you know, uh, category. But also because I had a dermatologist dermatology procedure that brought the exact same spots in my face and so I'm, I'm really peeling right now so I'm not very peeling <laughs> so I didn't want to scare you um, but I decided for the announcements I'm far enough away <laughs> so um, now those cheerful observations behind me uh, do we have any announcements anything that uh, you want to share anybody well, I have one. Oh, yes, Lucinda. I talked to Beverly earlier this week, and she's not behaving herself. She's being normal. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of making it easy, she turned off this show and just kind of decided that she's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so she is doing well. Uh, I think she's going to have some physical therapy, but it's not going to be less than uh, just take a break and go back to the hospital. <laughs> church family with Pastor Bert. And so we all well, we talked to and, and set some things up and thank you, you know, for your willingness to sit down and, and chat. So if I haven't made a phone call to you yet, you can certainly um, uh, call me uh, or you can call Pastor Bert. And he shared his phone number, I believe, but I'm going to share it here. 678-463-9334. Mine shorter, 620-3304. So uh, it's a, a sitting down and talking to pastors in small groups is a great way to get to know, you know, our spiritual leader. So uh, now, if there aren't any other announcements, and it doesn't appear to be, let's bow our heads and pray for today's service. Lord, we are living in such an uncertainty now, and sometimes it's frightening to think about the present day circumstances our world. But please, touch the hearts and minds of people in the sanctuary and the people who will watch this service online as well. Remind us that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. 
Lord, open our ears today so that we may hear the message that you share with us through Pastor Bert. Let us take it into the week ahead. Let us be living examples of your love. In the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Will you please stand for our songs of praise?
any joys or concerns that anyone would like to share with us this morning? One joy I'd like to share is that in this past month, I have had the privilege of getting to meet all of you and having deeper conversations with some of you so far, and I look forward to continuing to do that. And I want you to know that, um, you know, I've, I've learned some of your senses of humor, and um, I've, I've had laughs at different times, and I just want you to know that I enjoy being here, and I want you to enjoy our time together as we continue to go forward with God leading us. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are no joys or other concerns. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Lord, this morning, Lord, we know that it may be raining outside, but there is sunshine in our hearts. We thank you this morning for lifting us out of our beds and our slumber and allowing us this privilege to be in your house of prayer this morning. We count it all a joy and a gain that we are here worshiping and magnifying your holy name as we continue to look to you for our hope, our strength, our help, and ultimately your love for us. Gracious Lord, we have continued to go through a time in which we're uncertain about what the future holds. Each day and each week we find more and more stories of what's going on around us with the violence and shootings and with the virus continuing to mutate and change and Lord, we want to hear from you. We've heard from all of us. We've heard the news stories. We've read the newspapers. We've seen it on the internet. But Lord, we need to hear from you. Where are you meeting us, Lord? Where will you take us? How will you lead us out of this darkness into your marvelous light? Help us to see the way, Lord, clearly. And help us to follow you eagerly that we may see this time in which we have come out and have a sharing testimony of what you have brought us through. Lord, we know that you're an awesome God, and we share our awesome praise with you because you certainly deserve all of our praise and glorifying your name. Gracious Lord, now continue to lead us, continue to help us to see clearly where we're going. Help us to know that no matter where you're leading us, it's going to be all right. Lord, we thank you for your son, his love, his gift of being among us, his gift of leading his disciples and teaching them, his gifts of continuing to share all that he had during his time on this earthly plane. And we know that there was one occasion in which his disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. And he taught them this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We please stand for our next praise of him, a hymn of praise, excuse me, the power of your love. Thank you. 
to the mountain, the river flows, and it brings refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valley and over the fields, the river is rushing and the river is here. The river of God sets our feet a-dancing, the river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God is teeming with life, and all who touch it will be revived. And those who linger on the river shore will come back thirsting for more of the Lord. The river of God sets our feet a dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. Up to the mountain we love to go to find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we run. We dance with laughter, giving praise to the sun. The river of God sets our feet a dancing. The river of God fills our heart with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. And we rejoice for the river is here. And we rejoice for the river is here. Thank you for sharing that. The river is the river is here. The river has all that God wants to share with us in our lives. The river is certainly here. The scripture this morning comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> Joshua, chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. But the Israelites' faith, but the Israelites broke faith in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of those devoted things. And the anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out Ai. Then they returned to Joshua and said to him, Not all of the people need to go up. About two or three thousand men should go up and attack Ai. Since they are so few, do not make the whole people toil up there. So about 3,000 of the people went up there, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai killed about 36 of them, chasing them from the outside, from outside the gate as far as Shebarim, and killing them on the slope. The hearts of the people melted and, and turned to water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the ground on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Our Lord God, why have you brought this people across the Jordan at all to hand us over to the Amorites so as to destroy us? With that, we had been content to settle beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has turned their backs on their enemies? The Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. Why have you fallen upon your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I imposed on them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have acted deceitfully. And they have put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the Israelites are unable to stand before their enemies. 
They turn their backs to their enemies because they have become a thing devoted for destruction themselves. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, this morning, as we're still journeying with Joshua and we're journeying with you as well during this time, let's, let us remember that this journey continues until you say otherwise. Though this may be the last time we hear about Joshua for a while, Remind us that every day is a journey, a journey that is with you, a journey that is full of hope and full of love because of you. Help us to remember that the love that you have shared with us is worth this journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So this is our last Sunday in journeying with Joshua. And I want us to remember that, though again, this may be the end of this series, it is never the end of the journey with God. Let us continue to remember the things that we've heard and shared, and let us continue to live them out as we continue to go forward with God in our lives. So this morning, I want to share with you about getting back on track with God. Getting back on track with God. This may help illustrate one of the points. This family, while they were driving in this remote camping area, the father of the vacationing family, they, they came across this large sign and it read, Road Closed, Do Not Enter. Well, this father decided to go around the sign because he was confident it would save them time on their journey. His wife was resistant to the adventure but there was no turning back for this persistent road warrior. After a few miles of successful navigation, he began to boast about his gift of discernment, but his proud smile quickly replaced with humble sweat when the road led to a washed out bridge. He turned the car around and retraced his tracks back to the main road. And when they arrived at the original warning sign, he was greeted by large block letters on the back side of that sign. His wife and his three children all read the hand-painted sign out loud. Welcome back, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there are no shortcuts to getting back on track with God. None. But it's still easy to get back on track because all we have to do is have our conversation with God, our prayer with God, continue to build our relationships <coughs> with God. So I want to ask you, what steps are we going to take that will get us back on track with God? The first step is that we've got to make, that we've got to make to get back on track is we must trust God again. We must trust God again. Joshua was leading a group of people who had disobeyed God and they had slipped in their walk and they had gotten off track. But Joshua didn't know what had happened yet. But when he started realizing that things were not going the way that God had promised them to go, he knew something was wrong. Joshua got depressed because his people had gotten off track. Joshua, in the seventh chapter, verse six, it says, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there until evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, our sovereign Lord, why? Why? Why has this happened? Now God knew that Joshua was discouraged that Joshua was depressed, that his confidence had been shaken and his trust in God had been, had been taken away. Haven't we all been there before? Are some of us there right now? But God, God had the final word and has the final word in all matters. 
If we go forward to the next chapter, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord is saying, Trust me, Joshua. Trust me. When I sin, when I get off track, the enemy tries to convince me that God is so disappointed with me that he doesn't even want me back. When I'm off track, I may feel discouraged or disgruntled or disappointed. But when I hear God say, Bert, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Trust me. I realize that all is not lost. That the enemy is just sharing one of many of his lies, many of the tricks, many of the things that just continue to dwell with us and seem to be ever before us that we cannot get back in good relationship with God. But I'm here to share with you that is never the case. We are always able to get back in a right relationship with God. All it takes is for us to have that conversation, that prayer that says, Lord, help me. Guide me through this time. Lord, I'm, I'm discouraged. I'm, I'm disgruntled. I'm, I'm disappointed in what's going on around me. But help me to get back on track with you. In Hebrews 8, it shares, as we're trying to get back on track with God, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Or what about John 1, 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is one of, these are the first steps, the things that we can do to get back on track with God, trusting God again, trusting that whatever God has in store for us, it's right. Trusting that no matter how weird or silly or unusual it may seem to us. If it's from God, it's going to be all right. It's not going to be a problem. We may not understand it fully, as the song says, we'll understand it better by and by, but remember, trusting in God is all that it takes for us to get through any situation. Our second step to, to, make, to get back on track with God is we must get busy serving God again. We must get busy serving God again. In order for Joshua to get back on track with God, he had to get busy serving God. Again, back in Joshua chapter 8, it says, Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. God is getting an off-track Joshua, and he's telling him to take the whole army with him. Get busy doing this for me. If you're waiting for God to reassure you about your trust in him, you may be waiting for a while. But while you're waiting, remember to continue or to start serving God. Because as you're doing things for those around you, as you're doing things that are pleasing to God, your confidence and your, your reassurance in God will build. To renew your trust in God, get busy doing something for serving God. This next illustration hopefully will help us to see that our persistence does matter. This little boy, his name was Jim, and he had all the struggles of the world, trying not to go to bed. He's five years old, and his dad, Paul, is, is trying to coax him and convince him to go to bed at a certain time and to stay in bed when he puts him to bed. And so, at some point, the dad wanted to eliminate this cat and mouse game of repeated trips back to Jim's room, uh, and, and one evening, he just said he had to lay down the law. He told him there would be no more talk after they had said their prayers together, had the last glass of water, told each other good night, and turned off the light. So the father was certainly trying to assert 
his parental authority and that it corrected the problem with his sons by his son's bedside. But in five minutes, Jim was calling out for another glass of water. So the father went in reviewing the rules and told Jim, now I need you to go to sleep. But again, within five minutes, Jim was requesting more water. So the dad increased his intensity this time and told Jim he would get a whipping if he asked for water once again. So this time, the father is convinced that the issue is resolved. But his confidence was shattered about five minutes later when little Jimmy said, Dad, when you come back in here to spank me, would you bring a glass of water, please? <laughs> That's the attitude we should have. Lord, I'm going to keep it up even if I fail. I want to continue to serve you. I want to continue to share what you've given me as gifts with others. I want to serve you as I rebuild and grow in my trust of you. Our third step is that we should resolve not to make the same mistakes again. God said to Joshua, you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. The problem in Joshua's first defeat was that they had just only partially listened to what God had told them about Jericho. Some had taken things that were not supposed to be taken. If you remember in the story in chapter 6, take only the things that were to be devoted to God, but leave all of the rest. And someone decided to take what wasn't theirs. Someone decided to take something and hide it for themselves, though God knew that that had been done. The problem with that is that Joshua may not have known, but they knew in their hearts and Joshua, as the leader, was going to have to take the responsibility for dealing with it. They listened to the part of what God wanted them to do, but only in part. They, they won the victory, but he told them not to take any of the treasures from the city. They disobeyed, and it cost men their lives. Joshua and Israel were only partially obedient. Partial obedience is no obedience at all from God's point of view. If we only follow the parts of the scriptures that are appealing to us, we're not truly being obedient. We're picking and choosing. We're designing what things that are pleasing to us and saying, oh, I'll obey this. I'll, I'll do what this asks me to do. But I can't really do all of those other things. Joshua and his people they weren't going to get, uh, get caught making the same mistake twice. They, they weren't going to fall into the trap of doing something other than what God had asked them to do. We don't want to make the same mistake twice. We don't want to continue to repeat what mistakes we've done because what that really shows is we're not learning what God wants us to know. I've heard it said often as the new and improved <clears throat> definition of insanity is when you try to do the same thing, then expecting a different result. We, we, we can't continue to do the same things and then think it's going to do differently at the end of it. We're going to get the same result. And God's going to be even more upset that we're not learning from our mistakes. The next step of getting back on track with God is that we must participate in worship again. In the 8th chapter of Joshua again, it says that then Joshua built on Mount Ebi an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. Joshua was not only reminded of yesterday's victories, he had to celebrate the victory that God had given him today. He had to worship God. He had to magnify God. He had to glorify God. He built an altar and he had church or or. As I used to hear when I was a kid, when he had church. <laughs> Joshua was getting back on track with God. He was looking at where they had come from, 
being ungrateful, being unthankful and unworshipful. And now they were back on track, worshiping God, praising God, being thankful for all that God had given them. Being ungrateful, unthankful, unworshipful will get you off track and it will keep you off track. You cannot be on track and not worship God. It's that big of a deal. I've had this philosophy for quite a while. The first Sunday you miss church, you say this, oh, I miss church. The second Sunday you miss church, you say, hmm, I miss church. <laughs> the third Sunday you miss church, what's church? We get so off track so fast that it's a wonder that we even realize sometimes where our help comes from. We have to understand that where God is leading us may not happen immediately. We, we live in this microwave society of it's got to be 30 seconds or less. Now that works for the Olympics. That works when you're swimming the 800 meters and you're supposed to meet a new world record. But it doesn't work with the rest of life when it comes to doing as God has asked. We are not in a sprint. We're in a marathon. And this marathon is for however long God says so. Now, for those of us who are seasoned saints, I don't want to proclaim what that age is, you know what I'm talking about. You realize that God has brought you from such a long way from where you have been to where you are now. And you are able to share that where you are now is by the grace of God. And for those of us coming behind, we are looking forward to those times. I certainly look forward to the time in which, when I get to my dad's age, he's going to be 87 on Tuesday. And I look back and say, when I was your age, I remember where God had delivered me from whatever the situation was. I was in this dark time. I was in this era in which I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. But God. God stood right there. God was with me every step of the way. In that dark tunnel, I came out into his marvelous light. And here I am today, able to share this word, this testimony about the test that I had gone through. I look forward to that time. Now, I share that now with my kids sometimes, but they're not ready to hear some of those things yet. But there will come a time in which they will be able to look back and say, Dad shared with us those things that they've gone through. And it is so much better that I listen, because we don't think they listen. But later on, we finally learn sometimes that they do listen. And at that point, they will realize that where they were going was going to get them in trouble. But turning away from that allowed for them to know that just as God had been with their dad, God was with them as well. I want to leave you with this one thought because it helps us to put in perspective what God is really trying to do. God not only wants us to get back on track, but doesn't it look great to stay on track? How often do we see a train derail? But yet, we don't even think about how often the train does not and stays on track all day, every day. But this illustration shares how we should perceive God. There was this general who once said to Abraham Lincoln about God being on their side. And Lincoln said, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. When we think about God being on our side, we've got it out of perspective. It is much preferable that we're going in the direction God wants to lead us. We've got to get back on track with God. We've got to go in a direction that God is leading us, pleading with us, pulling us, guiding us, so that we can help others to see the track that God is on and help them get on that track as well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
I so apologize. <laughs> I forgot this was first Sunday. Not literally, but just what's next. Our, um, our ritual for communion, let us prepare to dine at the Lord's table together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering through us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out on your Holy Spirit, pour, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us take the wafer at this time and hold it up. This is the body of Christ broken for you and for many for the remission of sins. Take and eat. Let us now prepare the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink this in honor and remembrance of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our closing song, will you please stand? God will take care of you. Be not dismayed wherever we time. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way. Every day. 